Our final presentation of the night, our finale, if you will, is the keynote address by Dubai Young and Nita Africa. The multi-award winning playwright and actor, one of Canada's most dynamic and electric performers on the theatrical and poetry stage, who brings her acting talents to the world of dub poetry in a crackling fusion of performativity. With a piercing wit and eruptive stage presence, Anita Africa transforms the stage into a place where the violence of the world is acknowledged, dissected, and totally rejected. New futures seem to emerge from her clarion call. I have to confess that I performed with Dubai at Ellington's Cafe in Toronto many years ago, and I am probably the only person who remembers that I was also there. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> Tonight, she will highlight what she calls the Anita Africa Method, an intersectional black feminist praxis of which she is the creator, addressing issues of gender, sexuality, race, class, and the human experience. Anita Africa leads a theater of ritual and self-recovery. She is a truly global citizen and creates opportunities to move beyond their confining borders. She curates international residencies for artists in the Caribbean, North and South America, Africa, and Europe, and has developed the Anita Africa Retreat Center, where she teaches artists globally. I'm very delighted to welcome her to teach us tonight. Dubai Young, Anita Africa. Yeah. So let me introduce you. I also remember that you were there, <laughs> just for the record. <laughs> Once upon a time today, in a land so far away, Did this come to 
to be. Many more moons wax and wane. Many more tides grew and died. Many more suns rose and set. And the people, the people did forget. The people did forget. Ashe, ashe, oh, ya mother of night. Ashe, ashe, oh, ya mother of wind. Thunder, lightning, death, and rebirth. Ashe, our mother of change. Come. Now, my children of this night, wake you up from your slumber and sleep. How a story calls with the urgent flight of how we came to be, of how we came to be. Across these oceans you must come. Your sons and daughters have survived five centuries. Five centuries. Five centuries. Beneath the divide, new me. To our lives, new meaning to our lives. You are all your mother of night. You. Your name is change. Your name is change. And we must change. Yes, we must change. Oh, we must change. Yes, we must change. We must change. You and I and we must change. It was performance that saved me. Watching Jamaican pantomimes at the Ward Theater near Coronation Market. Black bodies on stage that looked and moved and sounded like mine, incanting future possibilities through performance, storytelling, igniting every cell in my childhood frame. In that space, I didn't have to code switch, lie about where I came from, or ask permission to enter. Ashe to the Honorable Miss Lou, 
Rani Williams, the Little Theatre Movement, and all the players involved. It was the storytellers who saved me, the actors, the dancers, the poets, the singers, the musicians, who defied neo-colonial limitations, even while, even while creating hybrid theatrical forms from colonial imports, such as the British pantomime. I did not understand these limitations enough to articulate their impact on me at that time. Roadblocks erected by a dangerous legacy, imperialism. It's strategically constructed continuation in a, in a post-colonial country where majority are the children of Africa stolen. Patriarchy, capitalism, Misogyny, homophobia. I'm from a working class neighborhood called Shawtood Lane. And I went to school at New Day All Age. And I understood that my school was for those considered to be undesirable, less than somehow by the respectable read middle class, upper class, people, classism. Somehow, having economic advantage did exactly that, put you at an advantage in relation to those with less financial capital. capital. Classism mixed with colorism, self-loathing, you know, the way, the way it stands in for a hatred of poverty and therefore a hatred of, of poor people. A hatred of poor people, globally. Like, globally, we hate poor people. Self-loathing. A hatred of self. I remember experiencing classism from people who were as poor as I was. Internalized. Like internalized racism. And I remember experiencing it from my wealthy classmates when I went to Campion College. A different kind of school. <laughs> As if being black and poor was the worst thing in the world because that means you came from slaves. And I mean, what could be worse than that? Globally, what could be worse than that? My ancestors were not slaves. They were enslaved. You know, people love to talk about the slaves on the plantation, the black slaves Take away the slaves and just leave the black, the black people who were our slaves. And if you call them slaves, then nobody's responsible because if you recognize that they're enslaved, then somebody's responsible because somebody enslaved them. <laughs> the collective trauma is deep. We don't like to talk about colorism and shadism and classism that creeps into our blood, making us scrub ourselves economically, scrubbing ourselves economically, climbing the economic ladder, because that's what you do when you're talented or you're smart. You scrub yourself clean and you leave poverty behind. And I'm wondering what poverty we are attempting to leave behind. What poverty are you attempting to leave behind? <laughs> scrubbing ourselves clean till we bleed I was taught to wash the center of me like I was scouring a pot scrub it clean because the center of me was somehow inherently dirty and ugly the way that dark skinned West African nose thickly black, blackness immediately ugly evil and people say oh my goodness I'm just saying black as a word I don't mean black people when I say the dark and evil black thing it's just a word performance. <clears throat> Scrubbing ourselves clean. Far away from a peculiar construction of whiteness. Therefore, far away from beauty. Far away from middle classness. Therefore, far away from value and the way that these values become our everyday even when we are the most political of the political, these stories, 
sort of capitalism, white supremacy, the almighty dollar, total control, like enslavement, like a contemporary version without the overt chains. They keep telling us we have 12 more years. Otherwise, it's irrevocable damage that is done. And what am I doing? What is urgent? Performance. What is urgent? The psycho-spiritual shame is coming home to roost. I cannot help but remember the child version of myself desperate to understand why, why was I born wrong? I mean, really? Simply wrong in every way? It was performance that brought me salvation. Because in performance, I can cut through these constructed walls and actually just be a human being. <laughs> just be a human being. Not rich, not poor, not black, not white. In that tiny space, that moment where we're looking at each other and we can just be human beings together. So performance is the realm through which I conjure change. It's my most magical, witchy, powerful space. Performance. My name is Debi Young, Anit Africa, and I am an African, Jamaican, Canadian. Performer. I am a performer. And I learned this art form early through dub. John 9 tell them, said this is a warning and me no care where you come from, it's a new dawning. Tell the people of Dublin, revolutions rising. Look to the east and the west, in the on the horizon. Tell your friend, tell your mother, tell your cousin, we're a new generation with a free and we want with liberation. Emancipation, we want with liberation. Emancipation, we go to school five days of the week, relearning the fiction of their stories, written from the position of a damn victory. But uh, a pure lie, I'm a tell, tell. So won't you step in my class? I'm going to tell about the past, a new lesson for today to save our people of tomorrow. Row, 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 row. A time filled with the colonize. Human and a man say we must realize. Broken the legacy we are legitimized when we keep our eyes closed and act surprised. There's a little fella upon the street. In my pack a little neat. Uzi. I get a youth with few options. Him say, Gamma, him family. Watch him go out in a blaze of glory. You remember when we used to play in the dirt? Uh, and the boy them used to lift up with skirts. Uh, then the shandy hide and seek. Uh, Sin the bottle get a kiss on the cheek and flirt. Uh, now you see the youths that are coming up with splurt. Uh, open up a fire, everyone bite the dirt. He has a big old gun. Uh, he wants to have fun. Him don't know that a time soon come. Uh, him don't know that a time soon come. Uh, him don't know that the time soon come. John, I tell them, said this is a warning, and me not hear where you come from. It's a new dawning. Tell the people of Dublin, revolutions rising. Look to the east and the west. In the on the horizon. Tell your friend, tell your mother, tell your cousin we're a new generation with a free that no we want with liberation. Emancipation, we want with liberation. Emancipation, we go to school five days of the week, relearning the fiction of them story written from the position of their victories. But a pure lie, a pure lie, a pure lie, a pure lie, them tell Little Mary Sue says she want blue eyes. 
I asked her why and she started to cry. She said, my cousin Eileen, she gets the ice cream. Her skin's light brown and pretty. You remember when we used to play at Dali Ausa? You are the mother, me and the mother. The shade that we skin, no, it never matter. Well, now Mary Sue is 13. She's old enough to buy skin lightning cream. I'm the Nadi Nola skin lightener. She bleach out her skin so she can be lighter. <coughs> she bleach out her skin so she can be whiter. She bleach out her skin so she can be better. In other future, skin cancer. And I tell them, say, this is a warning and we not care where you come from. It's a new dawning. Tell the people of the world, revolutions rising. Look to the east and the west. It depends on the horizon. Tell your friend, tell your mother, tell your cousin who are a new generation. We're afraid of nothing. We're afraid of nothing. We're afraid of nothing. We're afraid of nothing. We're not afraid of nothing. We're not free of that nothing. We want with liberation. Emancipation. What does that mean? But what, what, is it, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does it mean to be liberated? What does that mean? What does it mean to be emancipated? These early dub poets, people like my auntie Lillian Allen sitting in the audience. <laughs> These early dog poets who I grew up watching, who nurtured me, who taught me that old African griot storytelling tradition way where you sit at the feet of your elders. They're fighting for liberation, emancipation. You know, that's a very complicated thing to fight for. Especially when you know as a human being that ultimately you want to be taken care of. So we get caught in our own desires for self-aggrandizement. And then we can't understand solidarity struggles across the horizon. So we will fight against racism but not classism. And we will fight against classism but not homophobia. And we'll fight against homophobia, but not the environment. So what does it mean to be liberated then? What is emancipation then? If ultimately we're only fighting for ourselves. These are the questions I'm asking myself. These are the questions. These are the questions. At what point does liberation and emancipation demand a wide panoramic 360 degree lens where we have no choice but to connect the past to the present, i.e., how did we get here? How did we get here? And can we talk about environmentalism and racism and classism and genderism without talking about capitalism? and our own desires for class ascendancy. These early dub poets, Muta Baruka, Afua Cooper, Adrizina Mandiela, Jean Binta Breeze, Linton Kwesi Johnson, they set the foundation while riding a wicked reggae beat. <laughs> <laughs> in my mother's graduating thesis from the School of Drama, which she entitled Dubbing Theater, Moving Dub Poetry into a Theatrical Realm, she identified the four main elements of dub as being nation language, the language that you speak in, the language of the people. Two, music, recognizing that Music, rhythm has a way of connecting us to each other that is very difficult to explain. And I know holy for bright-minded people can explain it, but me will just call it magic, <laughs> right? The politics, the politics, and that's a lowercase p, politics, which is the personal is political, is the political is the personal. That's one of the first things I learned from my elders where they said, 
if you're going to look out for yourself, you have to also look out for the community and the community is not homogenous. I.e. you don't only look out for people who have the same values or look like you or are you in so many ways. That the people becomes a continually extending circle of people. Could it be possible that this circle extends to the entire humanity? <laughs> Could it? And guess what the fourth element was? Performance. Performance. These poets recognized through blood lineage that ultimately that tree by which we gather, whether it's a tree of the kitchen or the tree of the bedroom or the tree of this lecture hall or the tree of outside or wherever you find that tree and you gather and you begin to tell each other stories that that place is the most revolutionary and transformative place. No matter what you believe and think, you can listen to a poem. You can see an artist embody a performance piece and be changed for your lifetime. That happened to me over and over and over when I was growing up. It led to a lifetime of trying to embody that possibility in every moment. In the same ways in which I was taught, I teach. I teach. We have to teach. We have to teach. I don't mean say you have to be a lecturer or a professor or whatever, whatever, whatever you find yourself doing in life. We have a responsibility for teach, just like we have a responsibility to learn. That came through very clear to me, and so I teach in Toronto. I started a theater company just like one of my mentors did, Adrizina Mandela, who started a theater company and taught us for free. Myself, Wayne Mengesha, Trey Anthony, Ngozi Paul. There's a whole generation of us who came out of B Current Theater. Free. So I teach for free. I started a theater company called Water and ran for eight years tuition free residencies because education should be free. Mentorship apprenticeship should be free. Apprenticeship is free. Like, like, we're talking about educating ourselves to educate our children for seven generations. You hear them talking about 12 years. That is not even half a generation. 12 years, they're saying. 12 years before it's irrevocable. So we have to teach. So in that capacity, for eight years, I invited whoever wanted to come, predominantly black youth, indigenous youth, trans youth, queer youth, non-binary youth, many of the youth who weren't being served in other spaces. Young people would leave York University, U UFT, Ryerson, and come to study at water, coming through the doors weeping, weeping, saying that they didn't see a space for themselves. They were in performance programs that were telling them that they needed to leave themselves by the door instead of telling them, bring all of who you are because in performance, there is room to hold all of who you are. That's why we tell stories, to understand ourselves as human beings. I couldn't understand how, how are these data programs educating these young people to further hate themselves? Educating these young people to, 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 to not acknowledge or even to go back into their histories and histories to understand what happened in the past. How could we possibly fix what is going on now if we can't educate our young people to go and look? Go and look to see. Look where your people came from. Look what was done. Look at the mistakes that we made so that we can do something different. I mean, it's madness. It's absolute madness for these performance training programs all over the place, educating young people to further hate themselves. Under the guise of, of, of studies, it's studies. We're studying. We have to teach. We have to teach, you and I have to teach. And in order to teach, we have to really and truly ask ourselves, what is it that we know? and what we don't know. We have to ask ourselves honest questions as educators. The future is our future. Anyways, <laughs> this program essentially just gave them room to look back. All I did with this method that Gregory just wonderfully described, and I 
even need to tell you no more. All I did was give them room and ask them questions and questions. The method is comprised of like a million questions. What does integrity mean to you? What does community mean to you? What does art making mean to you? Does your integrity have anything to do with your art making? These are old questions, simple questions. Not saying simple to answer, but simple to ask. And I just gave them room, and in giving them room, they used performance to investigate their selves as human beings on the planet. And out of that investigation came their solo shows. It's not no rocket science. <laughs> There's no rocket science going on. We just have to give people the space. We have to reconsider what education is. What, what does it mean to be educated? You know, I've heard a wonderful introduction um, by the head of the, of, the, of the department here. And I, when we think about colonization and decolonization, I mean, what a perfect opportunity. What a perfect moment in time and space. I love that, by the way, Christian. I love this quantum physics team. <laughs> love it. I love it. The presentations were so amazing tonight. Like, just incredible performance, storytellers, right? We just we have to ask ourselves these questions as educators so that we can create the space to ask them of our students. I'm just wrapping up, my almost done. <laughs> my almost done. So what I did was I took the main principles of dub poetry and added four more principles. So I added self-knowledge, I added urgency, sacredness, integrity and experience to the prior four of performance, orality, music, politics, language, and created a system whereby artists can be supported in looking back and can generate new creative material from that process of looking back, which they can then mythologize so they're not chained to the biographical. They then use mythology to further recover themselves. My approach is that performance is an act of recovery. Recovery for me and recovery for you. And what are we recovering from? What are we recovering from? Anybody? What are you recovering from? Just be honest. Anybody? You can share. What are you recovering from? Interruption. Interruption. What else are you recovering from? Capitalism. Capitalism. What else are you recovering from? The patriarchy. The patriarchy. Oppression. Oppression. Self hate. Self hate. Earth. 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 Birth. 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 What are we going to do with the time? We think about education, studying. Why is it that we create such beautiful, beautiful meanderings? We do that because I do think we are in love with life. It's so incredible to study. It's such a gift to be able to study, to go into something so deeply and meticulously. Like, what a gift. So then let us ask ourselves, what is the point of that? Why are we doing that? Is it so that we can support seven generations to come? Or is it just so that we can prop up ourselves in the here and now? When we're dead, we're dead and gone. For me, performance is the way that I choose to do the work. And I imagine that for all of us in here, we have multiple ways in which we choose to do the work and know that there's no one way to do the work. We need everything. We need everything, everything that you're passionate about. Definitely do it. Just ask yourself, why? 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 And in closing, who amongst us carry the sage secrets of loving? Our elders, our children, the ones who walk with the old time knowledge of a healing love an unapologetic love. 
an uncompromising love, our honest love. If you tell me who, I will sit studently by the rivers of their feet because I want to unlearn all the unknowings that I have come to know. I want to relearn a language of integrity. I want to relearn a language of honesty, of, of compassion. These languages were carved on our heart's tongue by ancient ones who somehow I have forgotten. Mm. It's like... It's like somewhere between a dream and a timelessness across the ocean waters. Our sons and daughters, our mothers and fathers and auntie, uncle, sister and brother, they stretch love's fabric thick and thin. So now, here we are trying, trying to heal. Trying to heal. Trying to heal these scars of wars, these scars of broken fiber that stick up inside of me like maca. Who amongst us carries the same secrets of loving? Where are our elders, our children, the ones who walk with the all time knowledge of a healing love, an unapologetic love, our uncompromising love, an honest love? If you tell me who I will sit, studently by the rivers of their feet because I want to unlearn all of this unknowing that I have come to know. I want to relearn a language of integrity. A language of compassion, a language of honesty. These languages were written on our hearts, tongues by ancient, ancient ones who somehow, sometimes, somewhere, I, me, you, we, have we forgotten? We haven't forgotten. We haven't forgotten. We haven't forgotten. We haven't Forgive me for not having loved you relentlessly. Forgive me. Forgive me for not having loved you. You gotta understand that in, in all cases, fear has been my worst enemy. I mean, were fear not here, I would kiss you and feed you food from my soul. And I would stop you from aching and share a smile. I would even wait with you by the roadside for a while. I would. Were fear not here. Were fear not here, the full moon radiance of your vulnerable and warrior spirit washing over me like, like the sun bathed in truth would mirror and I would shine and so would you. And we all would shine brilliantly. Were, were fear not here, I would give name to all the unnamed spaces. But fear is all around me. And how can I do that when there's fear within me? So forgive me. Forgive me for not having loved you relentlessly. I can't love you fearlessly, okay? I can't love you fearlessly. But I can love you courageously. In spite of all these fears, I can love you with honesty and with integrity because love, isn't love a healing? Is it? Is it? Love a healing? A healing rebranching itself like, like the roots of an ancient enchanted tree in a, in a magical forest whose roots reach beyond those wounds? No, these wounds. Okay, our collective wounds of today. But is love not a healing whose, whose branches are like arms outstretched to the promise of tomorrow? Is it? Here, now, today, in this room, you and I and we, are we the community? Are we? Are we the community? Not homogenous, but a community. Not the same, but a community. <laughs> Are we the people? Are we the planet? Are we, are we the, the universe? Are we the omniverse? Are we the multiverse? What are we? Are we everything and nothing? Is it possible that we are everything and nothing? Are we everything 
and nothing. And if we're everything, <laughs> we're everything and, and we're nothing. <laughs> if we're everything and we're nothing, what, what are we going to do with today? <laughs> Can you imagine? We're everything and nothing. <laughs> 12 more years, apparently. It's really weighing on me. It's actually really weighing on me. So we're everything and we're nothing. What are we going to do with our time? What are we going to do? What are we going to do with each breath that's left? What are we going to do with our hands? What are we going to do with our education? What are we going to do 